Welcome to an entry in our exclusive Three Steps to Gladiator series. We built these guides from the ground up to help players go from zero to Gladiator, even on a spec that they've never played before. Step one covers building your character and is essentially everything you need to get started once you hit level 120 on your class of choice. Step two builds upon that by preparing you for two of the most important skills to have in Arena. Finally, step three walks you through how to get the best results when entering the arena. Now, we're excited to announce that throughout December, we'll be bringing you daily releases on the second step in this series for all of the specs that you see on screen right now. So if you're looking to kickstart your climb to Gladiator on any of these popular specs, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified the moment your guide goes live. And head on over to skillcap.com wow if you're interested in checking out the rest of the series along with hundreds of other exclusive BFA guides. All right, let's get into today's step two release. Enjoy. Hey guys, welcome to our free part series called Free Steps to Gladiator. In these series, we'll cover step one, building your character, step two, preparing for PvP, and step three, entering the arena. In the second part of this three step series, we'll talk about preparing yourself for arena. In the previous video, we talked about talents, Azerite traits, and gear. And in this video, we'll talk about min-maxing your healing and mana efficiency, and getting the most out of your crowd control. The first step to min-maxing your healing and mana efficiency as a Mistweaver is to avoid overhealing. Renewing Mist should be active on all targets that are taking damage. Against Dot Cleaves, Renewing Mist combined with Counteract Magic will be your main source of healing throughout the game. Counteract Magic combined with Renewing Mist will be your main source of healing versus most Dot Cleaves, but Counteract Magic can be used against any caster that has some sort of magic dots to increase your overall healing and mana efficiency. Soothing Mist is your main channeled heal and should be used to outheal as much minor damage as you can if you're able to free cast. This will save you a ton of mana in the end. Most inexperienced Mist viewers make the mistake of overhealing minor damage with either Vivify or Enveloping Mist, wasting a ton of mana which could have been saved. Soothing Mist should be channeled on targets who are taking minor damage throughout the entire game. Your Jade Serpent statue should be up at all times for this to increase the healing of your Soothing Mist. If you're able to free cast without having to worry about interrupts, Soothing Mist combined with Renewing Mist should be enough healing to top a target for minor or dot damage, helping you save a ton of mana for late dampening. If the target you're trying to top is taking a lot of damage and you're struggling to outheal the pressure with just Soothing Mist and Renewing Mist, it's time to use Enveloping Mist and Vivify. If you do use Enveloping Mist or Vivify, make sure to combine it with a Thunder Focus T-Stack whenever possible. Using Enveloping Mist with a Thunder Focus T-Stack instantly heals the target on top of placing the halt on the target, and using a Vivify with a Thunder Focus T-Stack makes it cost no mana. The Focused Thunder Talent grants you an extra stack of Thunder Focus T, which means one can be used for Enveloping Mist to instantly heal the target, and the other can be used on Vivify during periods of heavy pressure while playing as mana efficient as possible. Mana T should be used off cooldown whenever your team is under pressure, for maximum mana efficiency. The best times to use Mana T is whenever your team is under a ton of pressure, allowing you to spam heal without worrying about having to spend too much mana. Look out to use Mana T during offensive cooldowns from the enemy team, or after coming out of a CC chain when you have to top your team back up. Life Cocoon should be used early and often to save mana and play as mana efficient as possible. When playing with free Burst of Life Azerite traits, Life Cocoon heals for a ton once it expires, or the Absorb is broken, giving you a big instant heal on top of reducing the cooldown of Life Cocoon by 20 seconds. Playing with Chrysalis and at least one burst of Life Azerite trait reduces the cooldown of your Life Cocoon to 55 seconds in PvP, allowing you to use it to counter most offensive cooldowns of the enemy team to avoid damage, rather than trying to heal through it and waste a ton of mana. Moving on to the second part of this video, we'll talk about how you can use your crowd control. Paralysis can be used to start a CC chain for your team and is usually followed up by a leg sweep. Paralysis, Song of Chiji and leg sweep will usually be used to set up a CC chain on the enemy healer. This will require you to save your mobility to get to the enemy healer to quickly set up your CC chain. Using Paralysis will allow you to land your leg sweep on the enemy healer and your partners can then follow up with any remaining CC to extend the CC chain. If you're playing with a comp that already has a lot of CC that DRs with Paralysis, for example when playing with a Hunter, or Mage, or Shaman, your Paralysis can be used on the off target to stop a cast from the off target, while both the enemy healer and the kill target are locked down. Since Paralysis shares DR with effects like Polymorph, Hex, and Freezing Trap. 
Ring of Peace is not necessarily considered a crowd control ability, but it can be used in certain ways to disrupt the enemy team apart from your standard defensive Ring of Peace, to stop the enemy team from connecting onto their kill target. Ring of Peace can be used to knock casters inside a pillar, which keeps them in place without being able to cast, or to prevent players from getting in or out of a room to make them line of sight their team. Like Paralysis, Ring of Peace can also be used to stop a cast from the off target or the enemy healer during your setups. That's gonna be it for step 2, preparing for PvP. Don't forget to leave a plus skill if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next part of this series.